Hey guys, what's up? I'd like to introduce you to Power Keys for Maya. I've been working professionally in the 3D industry for 14 years, and I've learned along all this way that uh, it's very important that you have a very fast and very productive setup in your modeling or animation software, right? So I've been working in Lightwave and Maya, Modo and many, many other applications. So I've tried to standardize the set of shortcuts that makes our lives well, my life easier and hopefully your life easier from now on. So uh, basically PowerKeys, it's a freeware uh, software. It's a productivity enhancement configuration set. It includes a number of simple yet effective mouse scripts. Okay, that will make your life easier. Most of them are of my own, but some of them are also freeware from other authors. They're properly credited in the, in the readme file. Uh, they're taken with the package, okay? And although mostly folks that on modeling, it also provides lots of uh, nice tidbits that will enhance your productivity for animation and animation editing and navigation. Okay, so it's based upon my uh, 2014's uh, modeling toolkit package, so sorry it won't work on previous Maya versions. Right, not that I wouldn't want to make it work, but <laughs> well, it lacks the functionality basically. Uh, you could map it to Nax, probably if you're interested to do that. Just don't ask me to do it. <laughs> okay, feel free to do it uh, for yourself if you want. So to install it, it's very very easy. Just unpack. Um, you're gonna get something like this. Just unpack the package and just drag and drop the folders to your. My installation, you can get it there pretty easily in in Windows. Just go to My Documents and Maya, and go to your uh, 2014 installation folder, right? So just select them and copy, and allow it to copy over. Uh, probably won't overwrite anything that you have. Those are mostly brand new scripts. Okay, so um, let's take a quick look on, on how does it work and what it can do for you. So first, let me open a small model task file. It's just, well, nothing, nothing fancy, really, just a sphere remodeled to be a kind of interesting shape that we can talk about um, how to, to make the most common modeling operations on it, right? So uh, first things first, your by default, your modeling two kids gonna be disabled, right? This is the button that regularly enables it, but um, no need for that. The shortcuts are gonna help you with that. So basically, um, the more often you use something, the more to the left side of the keyboard um, the shortcuts is gonna be. That's the generic definition. So it's it's more convenient, it's faster. Uh, to use for most people, of course, um, for left-handed people, uh, sorry, <laughs> you'd need a different setup, definitely. Um, but yeah, I hope this gives you pointers if you want to do something different. Um, anyways, let's get, let's get to it. Um, first things first, how to enter the, the model into kit system, even if you're not seeing uh, the tab, uh, the option here you can simply hit alt w okay and it's gonna enter straight uh it's gonna activate it and get straight to mode component mode okay so if you want to filter um for, uh, for vertices or edges or faces you're gonna use the three shortcuts a for vertices s for edges and z for polygons okay so as simple as that. And then you, uh, you use the regular shift click to add and control click to remove. By default you're gonna be on pick marquee mode. If you want to toggle to raycast, just hold the tab key and, and then you can simply click and drag. Okay, and this won't select anything behind. Okay, like uh, you're gonna get if you if you just drag select, it's gonna select stuff behind because it's not uh, recast mode. You can toggle it definitely here if you're going to do this a lot, but if it's just something quick, you can just select tab. This is just regular uh, modeling toolkit operation, right? So nothing new in the setup. So 
um, let me just show you how to quickly navigate the, the viewpoints. Let's start with the display uh, shortcuts. So if you hit one, you're going to see it in the front view. If you hit two, you see it from the top. And of course, uh, you can use the F shortcut as uh, in regular Maya to uh, fit screen with something that's selected. Okay. And um, if you hit three, you're going to see it from the side. Okay, and if you hit 4, you're back to perspective view. So no need really to use the, the space, hold, and uh, select, or even if you're quick with this, this is just something annoying having this panel popping up in front of you. So much faster to just go straight to 1, 2, 3, 4, and there you go. Okay, so um, if you want to change your display modes, you can use Alt one for instance and then you're into display wireframe mode if you hit um, alt 2 you're back to display shaded okay so don't care about <laughs> 2014's display uh, messages i think they can be disabled i never touch that really but it should be easy um and then you can use all three to display shaded and textured <clears throat> and um if you hide something you can use alt h to age as in height to reveal it okay um, if you have a light or something selected you can use alt L uh, for look through selected okay not showcasing every single shortcut here just briefly showing it for you guys uh, the guides in the readme uh, txt file that comes with the package so it's organized in um, the, the different sections like general selection so I'm just showing it in action and uh, some different elements that might not be so obvious just by reading the description. So if you have uh, an object hidden using Ctrl H, um, you can just use Alt H to hide it. And um, for you to change the um, display quality, which basically the smoothness value as you can get here in, um, in the uh, attribute editor for you know the smooth mesh option where you can just enable or disable the smooth smooth mesh preview um, you can do that also using the shift one shortcut shift two brings you back to smooth smooth mesh preview or um, you can also use the tilt uh, shortcut okay um, the tilt shortcut it's still work in progress so it might uh, look a bit stubborn at times. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it usually works pretty well, even on um, component selection mode, right? So sometimes you're just uh, making connections, stuff like that. And then you, you, you want to take a look at the raw mesh uh, and then you, you hit tilt. If you're using an international keyboard layout like I am using right now, you have to switch it um, to us right so um you, you just enable that on, on windows just using the, the regular language bar or something like that and then you switch to us okay um you can install it on windows preference that's very easy to do. just search online if you're in doubt of how to do that okay and when you set it to us then you just have to sing, to single tap till to make it work okay if not you can just double tap it and uh, it's gonna work okay so if for whatever reason in some specific circumstances it doesn't work especially when you're amidst uh, a more complex operation then you simply use the shift one shift two uh, key combos and it's gonna work fine okay this one is foolproof <laughs> so getting back to the view options um, you can also use the shift three um, shortcut to show the um, the hybrid mode which shows you both the, the cache and the smooth mesh and their connections in some circumstances uh, it might be handy but usually you mostly use uh, the one and two modes so that's why they're coming uh, ahead and not in the default order right so you can also if you're on wireframe, for instance, you could use Alt 4 to um, Alt 5, sorry, to remove the back face culling. Alt 4 actually it toggles the wireframe on shaded for unselected items. 
So if I just go back to Alt 2 and uh, unselect this guy, it's going to show it or not, like, you know, as if you're clicking here. So right now I don't have anything else. Let me just uh, select the camera here so you can see the difference. Okay, so that's the function for Alt 4. Uh, if you have multiple objects, this might be handy. Um, and then you have the, the very important Alt X, which toggles X-ray for you. Okay, so it's very useful when you have point, points that are hidden inside the mesh and you're trying to select them to move them. Uh, this is very cool, right? Okay, so you can also uh, use Alt-Shift-Z to undo any field changes. Okay, which the, on the default mode, it's Alt-Z. And, okay, uh, what else? Let me talk about a bit about the general options and then we're going to selection modes. So first general options, if you hit O, it takes, it takes you straight to preferences. If you hit F8, you go to component editor where you can set specific positions for vertices and, um, and even skin weights. Okay, so very handy too. Um, if you use uh, Control Z, it's undo. Control Shift Z, it's redo. Um, the, when you're rotating objects, many times you're. Uh, let me just get back to to object selection mode. Um, by the way, since I'm doing it, when you're into a component selection mode, and you like this, you're seeing here the icon for the modeling toolkit, which was previously the Max icon. Max is a, is a plugin for my, which was bought and turned into modeling toolkit. So um, when you like this, you're also in component mode, right? So if you want to go to object selection, uh, you, you're going to need to start using the, the regular mode fires. So to do that, um, there's a very handy shortcut in uh, power keys for Maya, simply hit X and it's good. It's going to do all that for you. Okay, set the right mask and uh, select the, the object, the, the, the host object for the components you were fiddling with and it's going to get you to the regular select too. So if you now use the WER shortcuts, you're going to use the standard transformations which have their ups and downs compared to uh, the modeling toolkit one. So instead of rotating it freely and getting close to 90 degrees and uh, you know typing it straight, it's very handy to be able to toggle the snap rotation mode in and out. So just hit Alt T, okay, uh, with any two select of course. And then uh, with Alt T enabled, you see the discrete options enabling like this, and it works for both rotation, as you can see here, using the step size of 15 by default, or you can change this for more, for less, 45, 10, whatever you need. And it also works for moves, so that you know, uh, you know, you have discrete move enabled, so you can simply move a specific step size, which you can set here, but, you know, just once, and not care much about it anymore. So, very handy. So let's talk about um, selection and selection conversion. Uh, for things, first, let's just, you know, regular click uh, selection. You can, uh, this of course, like I said, use the, the tab mode to just drag along edges or vertices or whatever you have set here using ASZ. Um, sometimes you, you want, for instance, to use the lasso. Um, to use the lasso, you use control Q, and then you just click and drag, and it's going to select the, the proper component uh, as set uh, in the modeling toolkit, right? So after doing that, you just uh, make sure that you uh, get back to the modeling toolkit, because this is a regular My option, it's not a, a modeling toolkit option. So if you use W, for instance, right now, you're, you're using the option for the modeling toolkit. So um, if you use any shortcut for the other specific modeling to key operation is gonna kick started, but you know, like I said, just hit Alt W and you're back to the modeling toolkit and all these configurations, right? With uh, the lasso selection option. So uh, besides the lasso two, 
um, and the masks that I've already shown. Um, you can deselect anything. Uh, the usual procedure, as you're probably aware of, is just double clicking it uh, on an empty space, but sometimes this is not good enough, you know, many times actually. So, for instance, I uh, suppose I have all these selections here and I'm uh, that close. I don't have any empty space to deselect, okay? And this is a very important action um, so that you, you're not stuck and have to manually deselect stuff. You just want to get rid of your selection and make a new one. So, for that, you just use the D shortcut the D letter right next to S, okay? Hitting D instantly deselects anything in your mask, okay? So if you're on, on object mode, it's going to deselect the object itself, okay? If you have the object selected and a specific component, it's going to deselect that component, right? That component type. So very handy. Um, if, on the other hand, you have, for instance, a polygon, so I just hit Z and just click, some stuff you can use Ctrl Shift I, which is the Photoshop standard shortcut for uh, inverse selection. So that's how it works using power keys for my. Okay. Um, what else? Okay, you can convert any selection like this to vertices. Uh, the default procedure is already pretty easy. It's just Ctrl clicking on the, the component that you want to convert to, but you can do that even faster without moving your mouse away from the center of the screen, just using the Ctrl Alt combination. So uh, if you want to convert it to uh, vertices and the shortcut for vertex is A, like I said, so just use Ctrl Alt A and it bang, it goes straight to vertices. So if you use Ctrl Alt S, uh, it's going to convert the selection to edges. In this case, it also includes these guys. Uh, just because it's it's incompassive, it's counting for these polygons here. But if I have a something smaller like this, and I use Control Alt S, you see it converts to the wrapping edges to those polygons. Okay, so very handy. Control Alt A it goes straight to points. Okay, so um, beside that, you can also toggle isolate selection. It's very handy. So suppose I want to. Uh, work on this piece of geometry so I can just double click in the direction that I want to select the loop okay which is a standard modeling toolkit thing and then um, I can grow this up using control up arrow okay and it's gonna uh, select the nearby the nearby uh, polygons in this case because that's the the mask that I'm using and of course I could remove stuff, use control tab to uh, to remove it using the, the raycast option. Okay, so the ideal thing is to hold tab first and then control. Okay, so it deselects stuff. Okay. So tab, control, and there you go. So now that I have a specific selection and suppose I have other overhanging pieces that I'm blocking that are blocking that are blocking my view, I can just uh, isolate the selection. Okay, so to do this, simply hit I. Just hit I once. I had other, other stuff here, so <laughs> it got included. Uh, if I want to go back to the default mode, of course, again, uh, keep working uh, here on the pieces. And whenever I'm done, just hit I again, and it uh, you know, disables the isolate selection mode. Very easy. So, other than that, you can also shrink the polygon selection. So, suppose I, I had groomed this, but it went a bit too far, and I want to go back to, you know, one loop uh, back. I can just use Control down on the keyboard, and it's going to shrink the polygon selection. Okay. So, let's talk uh, specifically about modeling, finally. So, like I said, Alt W to make sure you're using the modeling toolkit. This guy will be on then you can um, use W and many times you want to set a custom pivot okay for your transformations so um, if I just uh, use insert I'm gonna enter uh, the custom pivot mode the same thing as clicking on I just pivot here and uh, you see that it instantly changes the uh, the gizmo okay this modeling uh, is a default modeling to keep behavior but it's very 
uh, important for you to to learn about if you don't know it yet you can simply click anywhere and it's gonna snap just left click it's gonna snap to that component okay but many times you want to align the 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 pivot the axis of rotation that you're going to apply transformation so that for instance i want to move this uh align it to this this guy here to this face these faces here so i, I can just use uh, either control for a and z you're going to see that uh it's going to find some of the normals or you can use control shift so that it positions and orients the gizmo okay so after that, of course, you can um, tweak your your gizmo, just moving it around. But it already gets you pretty pretty close. I, I've just toggled it here so I can see the original faces just using the tilt shortcut. Okay, and once I'm done, I can uh, disable the uh, adjust pivot mode. And instead of using insert, which is pretty far away, I can just use Shift D and then I'm back to the default mode. I can enter um, the just pivot mode and get out of it just toggling it using shift D. Okay, so I could now just move it, control arrow, move it, control down arrow, move it again, etc, etc. Okay, you can still um, snap the vertices just, you know, like, like clicking here and just the regular way, just hold V and then you can just move it around okay um pre pre default nothing nothing changing here in this matter so you can just snap to whatever you want um just make sure you don't have any constraints so it doesn't get in the way okay when you're snapping if you need to snap to the grid use shift x you'll notice that as i'm holding it the grid snap mode is enabled right so uh very easy for you to do that as well um, and since uh, you're using a custom pivot here you probably want to get back to the to def default uh, pivot so you know like when you're in custom you, to get to world uh, there's no specific shortcut for that as of yet I, I haven't found any real reason for that just hold W which is the move shortcut and then click with the left mouse button and then you can easily go back to roll instead of just looking at it just uh, memorize that it's to the left okay so that you can quickly uh, hit W hold W and then click and drag to the left and then it's back to roll okay that's the, the right way to get back to roll mode fastest one so no shortcut needed for this so I just I can now hold um, I can now hold V and then drag it around and you see that it works fine okay so let's start talking about the mesh editing tools which you can see here you can um, use not only these operators but many of the default uh, my operators which aren't duplicated in the modeling toolkit so if I just want to extrude this guy for instance instead of going here and clicking I may be on you know some other uh, panel and not not reaching that uh, option so instead of depending on the buttons you can simply um, in this case just hit shift E okay and then you're uh, on the extrude mode so by default it's on the local Z mode just uh, middle click and drag to extrude it okay if you want to add segments um, if you just hold the right mouse button you're gonna see uh, the visions option the offset option so you can make this this guy smaller if you want to keep faces together or not so the idea is to uh, memorize this guy so just right click down and it separates each part right click down again or right click right and then you're on offset mode so that you can make this guy smaller right click left and then you can you know make it uh, go inside or outside okay so pretty easy the most important are to the left and to the right so right click right right click left and uh, you can just change among those two guys and right click upwards gonna change the divisions which are going to be added in the profile of the extrusion okay very easy 
So let's now check the bevel options. So suppose I have, uh, let me get back to edge mode. Oh, by the way, when you're uh, performing an, op an operation like that, the usual procedure to finish is, uh, you know, just hit enter or uh, there's no right mouse button completed here. So you usually hit enter. I, I think that's pretty awkward that you have to go to the right side and or let your hand go off the mouse. So I just uh, added the same uh, option to Alt Q. So uh, when you use Alt Q, you basically, it's, it's the same as hit and enter. You finalize an operation, which makes things faster when you're doing multiple ones like that, or you just want to get rid of the, the two, which you sometimes you can do that just hitting Q by itself without the Alt key press it. So, uh, so for instance, let's get this guy and Shift E. And if I hit Q here, you see that I, I've just released the, the two. Okay, in many cases it's gonna work. Uh, in some other cases you need to actually complete. For instance, when you're using the, the connect, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you can't just uh, finish the operation using the Q letter. Okay, so let me do this one. And let's talk about bevel. If I convert using Control Alt S to edges, then I Control click this one and just got these edges surrounding the, the previous polygon, previously selected polygon area. So I can just use Control Shift B and then I'm on bevel mode. Okay, so by default I use just the middle mouse button to offset. Uh, if I hold the right mouse button you see I have the segments option where I can just add multiple segments. Okay, so if I just hit Q, it finalizes the operation. Actually, it gets back to select mode, which usually uh, finishes the operation. Okay, so um, if I just want to get rid of those triangles, I can simply uh, select the verses. I just hit A and shift select these guys, and I, I'm going to use uh, the weld verses or merge verses to center option, which shift W. Okay, so very easy, just hit gear shift W. You can also select the edge and hit shift W. It's even faster if you're on edge mode, right? So just uh, shift W, shift W, shift W, and uh, you're done. And then you can move these guys around, okay? So Maya has just created one of those uh, orphan edges here with no uh, proper polygons. Uh, this is this is a thing that happens at times. It's pretty bad, as you can see, um, and not that obvious to fix. Like you can select the polygon, um, but you know can't can actually can properly deal with it. Uh, flipping the normal doesn't help. Flipping the normal um, using Paul keys is um, Control F. Okay, so but. You can't really fix this, um, not even with mesh cleanup. So that's a great opportunity for us to to test the the uh, pen polygon tool. It's very easy actually. I just um, release everything. I just select using D, and then I'm going to use Shift Z, um, and then it goes to the uh, pen polygon tool settings. Make sure you have Keep New Faces Planar. Uh, toggle on, that's why it opens the two settings by default, even if you're on the modeling two kids, gonna show you this guy. And then uh, simply select two of the valid edges. Um, so for instance, this guy and this guy. And then you can simply click and drag uh, the, the next point. And it's gonna be planar considering the first triangle that you have defined it. So you can just move it around, uh, use snap to point, um, you know, if you want, or you can just leave it a bit apart. And then to finish it off, use Alt Q, like I said. And you can see that it automatically fixes the, the nearby polygon. Okay, because now it's it's no longer no longer an orphan edge. And then um, to weld these guys, there are some options you could weld uh, to center, like I'd, I've shown already using Shift W. But in this case, the best option is 
to use a target weld. And target weld instead of shift W is control shift W. Uh, make sure you're on vertex mode. Hit A. Okay. And then just click and point from the origin to the destination vertex. And it automatically snaps and merges everything. To check it out, just hit tilt and to see the result. There's still a problematic edge here. I've just seen that. So let me just get out of this and delete this guy. And there's probably a double edge here somewhere. So let's get back here and see what edge fixes the problem. Um, yeah, I can see there's a, plum, a double edge here. So let's just merge using Control M and see if it works things out. No, it doesn't. So yeah, I'll have to fix this a bit better. Let me first get rid of that. Uh, okay, and um, just recreate these guys. Okay, because these points aren't properly connected. So let's try it again. Uh, one thing you can do in this case is just use the edge mode and then uh, double double click if possible. In this case didn't really help. So I just select everything around and hit Shift F, which is the shortcut in power keys for fill hole, right? And then let's see if it work things out. Apparently it did. So now all we need to do is to connect these two points and to connect very easy. I just hit A and click or shift click straight these two points and then I use shift A. So for you to cut geometry around just use the shift C shortcut and you'll be uh, in the multi cut um, tool. So just click click it has a uh, these uh, the percenters uh, you can use the control shift uh, right click for the two two settings or you could use just a snap percentage option here if you prefer okay so just use shift as you're dragging this around and it's gonna snap to whatever is set here okay and I just click here and hit Alt Q. So it finalizes the operation. Let us check the mesh integrity. It's fine. So the, the tilt shortcut is pretty good for that. To make sure that everything is facing the same side, etc. A good tip is to always use uh, the lighting and disable the two sided lighting so that whenever you have a flipped polygon. So for instance, if I use Control F here, you can see that it gets. Uh, like invisible okay because it's now visible from the other side and the two-sided lighting won't uh, disturb it so one of the things you you most uh, usually need to do like really often is to remove edges while keeping the the curvature okay to do that simply select the edges that um, you want to remove without um, uh, Nothing with the curvature without destroying the, the current curvature and hit C. Okay, just that C. So if I want to keep removing edges, I can just double click C again. You know, um, for you to slide things around, and that's the default modeling toolkit uh, operational thing. You can just use W um, and then use Control Shift, Metal Drag, and you see it's gonna slide so you can make things um, tighter to one or the other side okay you can use tilt uh, while you're performing the operation to see it interactively the results okay if you want to connect it so that you add extra loops here so this area is also tidy as the bottom one you can simply you know select one face shift double click in the direction that you're gonna uh, select the loop so if I would select here, I would select this one, but I want in this direction. So I just use Shift and double click in here. And then you use Control Shift C. Okay, and then it's going to show um, the, uh, how many connect segments you have. You just hold right mouse button. It's going to give you the options. So you can just set it to slide or pinch 
okay so it's very easy to remember because it's a right click to the right and it's slide okay right click to the left and it's pinch uh, you won't see it uh, immediately effective you have to actually hit alt q but after that uh, like i've just shown you can just use Control shift uh, with move selected and Control shift middle click it around okay so it's very easy for you to to reposition it like so okay if you need to spin an edge which is very common when you're defining the, the topology of your shape you can just use alt z okay and it's gonna instantly rotate it uh, counterclockwise besides the loop slide which i've just shown Control shift middle click there's also um the actual uh, constraint to surface uh, mode okay transform constraint to surface uh, instead of going here to drop down you can with power keys you can do that much faster just select the component so for instance i want to move this guy upwards without uh, changing the curvature so i just want to slide it so the only thing i have to do is hit alt s and then you see that it instantly goes to surface mode constraint so if i move it upwards instead of going vertically it's gonna slide up or down in this case okay i can, I can obviously just select the middle one and just slide it around and it works just fine okay if you just hit alt s again it disables the constraint so you're free to move around. One thing I forgot to mention is that if you're on extrude mode, you can just extrude things around and regulate the offset and then just shift click to go to the next shortcut, to the next extrusion, I mean, and then you can shift click it again, just like in Modo. Um, whoever have used it in Modo know how cool it is um, to just shift click and to add these uh, segments to your extrusion just like so okay very easy so in the next video we're gonna see the more advanced constraint options uh, it's gonna be really interesting we're gonna separate and combine objects so don't miss it see you there in a second